So a quick warning for everyone walking into this movie, despite being called Alien Covenant, you will not see the Master Chief. Sorry to disappoint you. At this point, Ridley Scott needs to knock it off. He's just destroying his own legacy. So I love the first and second Aliens movies. I think that they are some of the pinnacles of their respective genres. Everything else that came after that has been a complete and utter failure. I mean, I'll grant that there were some good parts in this movie, which I'll get to, but my god. I mean, when your plot is only possible because your characters are blindingly stupid, you should step back and rethink your story. So anyway, this takes place about 10 years after the Prometheus movie, which that's its own set of problems, but never mind, we're talking about a different movie. There's a colony ship called the Covenant, which is moving from Earth to... I forget what the new planet is, I'm just gonna call it Planet X for the sake of ease here. Anyway, there's a solar flare burst thing or something that wakes the crew up seven years too early. And while repairing the ship from the damage the solar burst thing caused, the crew comes across this weird, severely garbled message. I mean, something that was so garbled you could only interpret it as various layers of static. Somehow they're able to trace the source of this particular signal to another planet about a few weeks off of course. Something I should also mention is that their captain, the real captain, died when his sleep pod caught on fire and now we have his second in command in charge. Well, his second in command really wants to prove himself that he's, he's capable of making these great choices, that someone who still believes in God, although he never mentions what, which God, but someone who believes in God is still capable of leading a mission like this. And so he makes the decision to leave their original planned trip to go to this new planet. I mean, the planet is in the hospitable zone in the solar system, it seems like it would be okay, but really that's the only thing they know, it's, it's in the hospitable zone. They haven't scouted the planet at all, no probes have been sent, they don't know if the air composition will kill them, they don't know if there are any deadly life forms. Hint, there are. And for some reason, the rest of the crew just goes along with this. I'm sorry, you've got a ship of 2,000 colonists in stasis with plans to go to this one particular planet, Planet X, and you're just going to divert course. Why? To prove to the company that you're capable of doing a job? You're clearly not. You're making the worst possible decision ever. And the problem is this taints your view of the rest of the movie. This comes up early, so for the entire movie you're thinking, God damn it, if that one guy hadn't been such an idiot, none of this would be happening. I mean, the colonists signed up to be on Planet X, and you're taking them to this goddamn hellhole. If by some remarkable miracle you didn't get your ass fired when your bosses found out what you did, I'm pretty sure you'd get your ass sued. Seriously, why did no one break this guy's legs in the start of the movie when he suggested this? Anyway, you know where the movie goes from there. The aliens show up, the xenomorphs, and they start slaughtering everyone one by one. Actually, something I've noticed is that there are a lot of comparisons between this and the first Alien movie, which I did appreciate. It didn't feel like it was stealing material and story elements per se, more like a paying an homage. Although, considering that that's an homage to Ridley Scott's original work, could this whole thing be considered masturbatory? Anyway, most of the comparisons to the original Alien movie stop after the first 30 or 40 minutes when the Xenomorphs show up. Or I guess they're calling them Neomorphs in this one. And they run into David from the Prometheus. He got a nice little retcon, because if you've seen Prometheus, spoilers, you know that David got his head ripped off. Well, now he's... good again? The one surviving human from Prometheus managed to somehow repair his head and put it back onto his body using equipment that was only on an alien ship. It, I, it didn't make sense to me, but I, someone approved of this script. But this does lead to a really good performance by Michael Fassbender, playing the older model of David, as well as a new model, Walter, who's going along with the crew on the Covenant. You have Walter, who's dutifully obeying the humans and going along with the expedition to try to help them as much as possible, compared to David's not-quite-right-in-the-head personality. Can an android develop psychosis? Actually, the acting all around was pretty solid. Look, I'll complain about the story all day long, but everyone nailed their roles. I mean, maybe four or five of them actually had personalities, but, I mean, it's a monster slasher movie. And in that regard, I genuinely believe that all of these characters were terrified. So I can't possibly fault the acting. Also, the sets, the costumes, the props, all those look really good as well. 
And most notably, something you've probably all already heard from other reviews, were the special effects. The visuals in this movie are fantastic. I mean, these death scenes got the most visceral reaction out of me from anything for a long time. I don't think I've been this freaked out by visuals since, like, Dead Space 2. And if we're just talking those elements, then everything works. Unfortunately, the story itself is a significant contributor to the whole movie. But when you're a guy like me and you're just watching there questioning all the incredibly stupid decisions by the characters, the, the unnecessary side plots... And I had this problem with Prometheus as well. They bring up the idea of faith and God and religion and creation. Where did we come from? Who made us? Why? Things like that. It's like Ridley Scott wants to get some sort of a discussion going, or get us to start thinking about something differently, and they present the idea, but they never question it. They never pursue anything with it. And if you're able to mix something like that into a movie effectively, it could be for a much deeper experience, but unfortunately, it was the whole thing was flat. Unfortunately, by the end of the movie, I was feeling listless and bored. Oh, and that's another thing. If you've ever seen a movie, ever, you'll see the ending of this movie coming about halfway through. Which is what really annoyed me because the movie both telegraphed it and tried to hide it. I was like, guys, you've done this before. Do one, not both. Ugh, but whatever. To sum up everything, the movie is very good visually, and if that's all you're into for the movie, or even if you liked Prometheus, I would say go check this movie out. You'll probably like it. Otherwise, the glaring plot holes, the character decisions, the really stupid ones, they're gonna bother you a lot. If you're looking for a well-rounded story, depth, anything like that beyond a visual medium, then you're not gonna get it here. Short version, if you didn't like Prometheus, don't watch this one. And they're obviously going for a third movie, but I don't know how much more we can take because, quite frankly, this series is now bubbling over with plot holes. Seriously, fuck every movie in this franchise that aren't the first two.